Hey guys, it's Crystal. So over the last few months you've seen me in a few videos and you've probably come to the conclusion that I like detective fiction. A few of you suggested that I should do a recommendations video about some of my favorites, so I'm here to do just that. Um, I have two all-time favorites along with some middle grade, some YA, and some other. So it's quite a list to get through, so let's do it. So my first and absolute favorite is the Inspector Banks series by Peter Robinson. I read my first Inspector Banks book in university when I took a Canadian detective fiction class and it was so good. The first book I read was In a Dry Season, which is actually book 10 in the series, but it was the first book in which a new character Annie was introduced, so we got to meet Inspector Banks and his team along with her, so I feel it was the perfect gateway to the series. So after enjoying In a Dry Season, I went back and read the first nine books in the series and have now read all 24. The 25th book came out just this summer and I really can't wait to get my hands on it. The series takes place in Northern England and we follow Banks through a divorce, quitting smoking, promotions, and other big life-changing events. Some characters and villains throughout the series come back in later books, but the main team is always the same and it's such a great supporting cast of characters and they all have their own storylines, which I always find is really great. These books are definitely the police procedural kind of crime novels, but I always find that the main case within the story is relevant to the times. Remember, the series did start in 1987. When I first started reading his books, Peter Robinson did an author event in my town, so it was really cool to go hear him speak and read from his new book and get my book signed. Uh, when I met him, I was pretty chill, but I think if I were to meet him now, I would totally fangirl out. I definitely recommend giving this series a try. If you want to try just one of his one-off books to check out his writing, I definitely recommend Before the Poison. So next up is my teenage obsession, Dick Francis. His books aren't so much a series as they are a brand. Um, if you're not familiar with Dick Francis, he was a former steeplechase jockey turned crime novelist, and all his books take place in the British horse racing industry. So as a horse-loving, mystery-obsessed teenager, these books were definitely made just for me. <laughs> Though always based in the British racing world, um, each book has a different theme, character, crime, and location, which is really cool. As it turns out, there's actually a small five book series within all of Dick Francis's books, and they star one of my favorite characters, Sid Hawley. This five book series spans from Sid's introduction in a book called Odds Against in 1965, and finished up with the, the fifth book in 2013 called Refused. Although these books were written 50 years apart, in the last book Sid's only 47 years old. He is not an old man. In the first book, Sid is a champion steeplechase jockey who suffers a fall and ends up injuring his left hand. While he's no longer racing, he is recruited by a private security firm to do investigations within the industry. Uh, over the course of his first investigation, he ends up losing his hand completely. So throughout the course of all five books, Sid deals with uh, the realities of losing a hand. He ends up going through a divorce. Uh, he still continues on investigations and somehow maintains a really close relationship with his ex-father-in-law, who is a key player throughout all five books. In book four, he remarries. In book five, actually, his wife and daughter play a role within the story itself. So I don't think I could choose a favorite within this five book series. Sid has always been a favorite of mine right from the beginning. And when I was burning my way through Dick Francis books, there was no internet to tell me that he was in other books. So I was always happy to find him pop up when I was just reading the next book along. Though Dick Francis has passed away, in his later years he did co-write some books with his son Felix Francis who has kind of picked up the brand and I've read a few books of his as well and they're pretty good. So I've recently discovered two middle grade series that I've completely fallen in love with even though I've only read the first book. Um, the first is A Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. I wish I had these books when I was younger. This series takes place in an English all-girls boarding school, the Deep Dean School for Girls, and within it, uh, Daisy Wells and Hazel Wong have their own detective agency. They feel themselves as Sherlock and Watson, and one night, Hazel discovers the body of her murdered teacher. Yes, a murdered teacher in middle grade. Um, when she goes and gets Daisy and comes back, the body's mysteriously missing. So these two girls take it upon themselves to make a list of suspects and go through all of them teacher by teacher, crossing names off their list. Within the book, we see Hazel's updated suspect list. As she crosses people off the list, we can kind of cross them out cross them off hours too and try and figure out who really done it. I really love this book, the characters, the setting, the humor, just everything. I've already picked up the second book and I can't wait to get started on it. So the next book I picked up completely randomly but was pleasantly surprised and I can't wait to read the other two books and that was Book Scavenger by Jennifer Chambliss Bertman. So this book isn't so much a detective book in the sense but it's all about gathering clues and solving puzzles. The best way to get a sense of the story is actually what's written on the back of the book so I'm just going to read that. 
Twelve-year-old Emily is on the move again. Her family is relocating to San Francisco, home of her literary idol Garrison Griswold, creator of Book Scavenger, a game where books are hidden and clues to find them are revealed through puzzles. But Emily soon learns that Griswold has been attacked, derailing the launch of his epic new game. Then she and her friend James discover an odd clue, which eventually leads them to a valuable prize. But there are others on the hunt for this special prize, and Emily and James must race to solve the puzzles Griswold left behind before his hackers come after them. I enjoyed this book for many reasons. The first is which I just really love puzzles and trying to figure things out. And the second is that it took place in San Francisco and I just love reading books that take place in cities that I've been because you can follow the characters around and kind of get the sense that you're really there because you recognize landmarks in certain places. It was just a lot of fun. I haven't picked up the second book yet because I was waiting for it to come out in paperback because I like my things to match. But there are two more already out in the series, so if it sounds interesting to you, I'd definitely give them a try. So my first series recommendation for YA is the Charlotte Home series by Brittany Cavallaro. I had my eye on the first book right from the beginning because, I mean, just look at how beautiful this cover is. The series is about the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. We have Charlotte and Jamie, and although they know of each other, they only first meet when they attend the same New England boarding school. Jamie is the new kid, where Charlotte is completely established in her environment. She has her own office slash lab, and she basically just does whatever she wants, just as Sherlock would have done. The first book has them solving a case on school grounds where a student has been murdered and Charlotte and Jamie have been framed. Uh, the second book takes us to England and Europe, where we follow the mysterious disappearance of Charlotte's uncle and get into some twisted criminal art scene in Germany. The Moriarty family also plays a role throughout the series, as does Charlotte's older brother, the Mycroft type character. I listened to both these audiobooks back to back and I really got into the story and I really love the characters. Book two ended with a bang, so I'm really hoping my library will have an audiobook of book three soon because I really want to know what happens. So the character in this next series isn't exactly a detective, but I think that an investigative journalist counts, and that is the Lois Lane series by Gwenda Bond. I stumbled across the first book at Yalfest a couple years ago, and I was really attracted to the cover, as it is beautiful, but I was a little bit skeptical. A teenage Lois Lane in a DC world has the potential to be cheesy, so I really wasn't sure. This was fantastic. I originally purchased the ebook just to be on the safe side, but as soon as I was finished, I needed a hardcover of the first book, I ordered the second book, and I pre-ordered the third book because they were just incredible and I couldn't get enough of them. In this series, Lois and her family have just moved to Metropolis. In her new school, she's drawn to the, this mysterious group known as the Warheads. They're kind of big players in this highly submersive VR video game that everybody in school is playing. But there's something just not quite right about this people. When she stands up for a girl at school who's being bullied by the Warheads, she catches the eye of Perry White, who has um, recruited her for the Daily Scoop, which is an online news outlet of the Daily Planet. So Lois, along with some other girls from school, work at the Scoop, and they kind of form their own, like, Scooby gang. In the first book, they take down the Warheads, and in the second, they dive into the political and criminal underbelly of Metropolis. The third book brings out the big guns mutant teens, a mad scientist, and a character I've been waiting for this whole time. And no, I don't mean Clark Kent, he's been here the whole time. Once upon a time, Lois and her father witnessed a flying man when they were driving through Kansas, and since then she's been trying to uncover more about this mystery. She belongs to a conspiracy theory website, and one of those other members is Smallville Guy, who she forms a friendship with and maybe a little bit more. Um, eventually, they get to know each other a bit better by meeting up in this submersive VR video game that I mentioned previously, so she's able to communicate almost face to face. Like I said, I wasn't sure what to expect when I got this, but it did end up being my favorite discovery last year. I cannot wait for the fourth book. I really want to know what happens. I don't know when it's coming, but I need it soon. So before I move on to the others that I've mentioned, I do have a few honorable mentions for middle grade and YA, and that is The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trent and Lee Stewart. It is about four kids who come together to fight a big, great villain who is just perfect. And it's all about solving puzzles and going on adventures, and it's just fantastic. My YA honorable mention is the Trouble series by Stephanie Tromley, and that is uh, Trouble is a Friend of Mine, Trouble Makes a Comeback. And the third book, which I can't quite remember the name of right now, but it is on my TBR, ready to go on my e-reader, and I can't wait to get... <laughs> and I can't wait to get started. 
So finally, we have the Others mystery series that I've been talking about. And the first up is the Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. This is pretty much urban fantasy meets police procedural. So in the first book, we meet our main character, Peter Grant. He's a constable for the London Metropolitan Police. And while investigating a really bizarre murder involving a ghost, he's recruited by Nightingale, a detective inspector uh, who runs the Folly and the last sanctioned wizard in England. Grant is taken under his wing and becomes the first wizard apprentice in England in over 70 years. So in this version of London, all the rivers in London and other rivers throughout England have goddesses and even a few gods. Peter gets to know these goddesses quite well over the course of his investigations, and usually they are integral into solving his case, or sometimes they are responsible for the case itself. The main villain throughout the series is the Faceless Man, and he's actually pretty terrifying. There's also a great supporting cast of characters, some of them you love to hate, I'm looking at you, Inspector Sergeant Stephanopoulos, and others that are just completely endearing and you just want more of them. I'm always invested in the story and I'm on the edge of my seat. Uh, if you're a fan of Jim Butcher, I think you would definitely like these books as well. So last but not least is another series set in England. Yes, I definitely have a type, and that is the Thursday Next series by Jasper Ford. I can't get enough of these books. I first discovered them while I was living in England and I burned through everything that had been published and then I waited and waited for each new book to come out and they always delivered. Like Rivers of London, this isn't your average England. This is a world of time travel, dodos, black market cheese, and crimes of a literary nature. Our main character is Thursday Next. She's a literary detective in the Special Ops 27 division in Swindon. She's able to travel between our world and the book world, which is one of my favorite fictional worlds that I would just love to visit. There's always so much to talk about with these books, so for the first introduction, I'm just going to read what's on the back because it kind of opens up this world. Meet Thursday Next, a literary detective without equal fear or boyfriend. There is another 1985 where London's criminal gangs have moved into the lucrative literary market and Thursday Next is on the trail of new the new crime waves Mr. Big. Archer on Hades has been kidnapping characters from works of fiction and holding them to ransom. Jane Eyre is gone, missing. Thursday sets out to find a way into the book to, to repair the damage, but solving crimes against literature isn't as easy when you also have to find time to halt the Crimean War, persuade the man you love to marry you, and figure out who really wrote Shakespeare's plays. Perhaps today just isn't going to be Thursday's day. Join her on a truly breathtaking adventure and find out for yourself. Fiction will never be the same again. Throughout the series, we cross paths with many of our favorite literary characters, and there's even a similar unit of detectives within the book world led by Miss Haversham. I don't think I could pick a favorite in the series, but I am a big fan of Something Rotten. In that book, Thursday has to help out Hamlet and a bunch of other Shakespeare plays and ends up bringing Hamlet back to her version of England where he sees a production of Hamlet and it is very interesting to say the least. I don't know what else to say. Ford has a very unique sense of humor and I just love the thought that went into creating the book world. Uh, if you have read these books or just want to try something a little bit different, I would check out his Nursery Crimes series. Um, in The Big Over Easy, we solve the murder of Humpty Dumpty, and in The Fourth Bear, we investigate the mysterious disappearance of Goldie. So those were a handful of some of my absolute favorite detective and mystery type series. If you've read any of them, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you have any recommendations for series that you think I might enjoy, please share those in the comments below as well. I'm always looking for a new world to dive into. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!